morning and welcome. Pentecost that we celebrate and a very special day. That's part of the reason we have the red and so on going on. And uh, we celebrate the, the giving of the gift. Uh, a couple of announcements. COVID is still, just encourage you to be careful uh, and get checked. Uh, and we do have a couple of members that we need to be praying for who have it right now again. Uh, and uh, we're pretty much back on schedule. But at this time, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Matthew Keener uh, to please come forward. And he has a, an announcement about a, a new service ministry that, that he's putting together. Uh, I'm Matthew Keener with Keener Farm, and we started a nonprofit charity. It's called Keener Farm Charitable Organization. And the 30,000 foot overview is we are bringing in donations. We're bu- taking those donations, buying local cattle from local farmers, turning it into hamburger, and donating all the burger to the food banks, church pantries, and soup kitchens across the state. Our goal was to be in all 88 counties uh, within a couple months. So one of the things that I would like to talk to you guys about is how do we make sure once we actually get launched, which is tomorrow, if you guys check the news, we'll probably be on there. Um, How do we make sure we get the word out to our Lutheran families, our personal families? Um, As a society, we are going into some tough times with inflation, with fuel costs, with everything. There's a lot of folks that are pretty close to the line that in the next year, with the increase of living, is, are probably going to drop below that line. Um, and for us to do things to try to make sure that they have good food, um, there's a lot of people that are going to make decisions on whether they buy fuel or buy food. Those are bad times for folks. And if we can do things that can alleviate some of those bad decisions and bring a better quality of life, I think that would be great for us to do. Um, food Bank is our large partner. And we're working with all the food banks. They're going to be doing distribution to all the counties. Um, And for us to make sure that we have church members, family members that are maybe going to work every day, that are barely keeping their head up, and they aren't able to get away from work or whatever the responsibilities are to go to the food banks at the times for their pickups. Um, Maybe some cool ideas for us as Lutherans and family members to say, hey, this is how we're going to be able to get this product to the people that need it in our, in our communities. Um, some ideas from you guys would be great. Um, also, uh, keenerfarmcharity.org is our um, website. That is our donation page. If anybody wants to go to that, make a donation. That would be great. And spread that keenerfarmcharity.org to other folks that would like to, to donate and help. So... Um, with your guys' help in the next little bit, hopefully we can really spread the word across the Lutheran community, um, our own personal communities, and help as many people through the tough times that are coming in the next couple of years. With the grain prices, I'm a farmer, so I'm kind of tied into um, some of these costs. Right now, the fertilized cost has gone from about $200 a ton to $1,000 a ton. Um, as the $5 fuel works its way through, the, the farmers are producing grain that's tremendously more expensive. By the time that gets harvested in the fall, then that expensive grain gets fed to the cows, pigs, and chickens. Those numbers are going to go up. This thing's not going to be alleviated for a, for a good while. So um, anything anybody can do to help would be great. And um, thanks for everything. Have a good one. Thank you, Matthew. And just one uh, little message to you, too. Please, uh, Leave uh, the, 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 the web page address, uh, get it to our church secretary, and we'll make sure that we get that into uh, the, the, the bulletin and communicator, too. So thank you very much. That's, that's just a beautiful thing to uh, have the Spirit of the Lord lead you to uh, be developing. So please read your bulletins and, and look at the different announcements. We're basically on uh, our, our regular schedule. And this morning, we start out with Psalm 143. That's printed on the front page of your bulletin. 
I pause because there, there was a time many years ago that I was going through some difficult times, and this psalm itself was kind of like my lifeline. It's a cry out to God uh, for help. So please stand with me as we uh, read through Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. For the enemy has pursued my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me sit in darkness like those long dead. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. Please remain standing for our first hymn.
Please remain standing and turn to page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have learned and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit, May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving your Son, Jesus Christ, to take on human flesh and to die in our place so that we can have eternal life. And we thank you, Father and Son, for sending the Holy Spirit to us. Lord, fill us, immerse us in your Spirit, even today as we hear your word and worship you. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. The Old Testament reading for this day of Pentecost is taken from the 11th chapter of Genesis. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, there are one people, and they all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they'll do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, and therefore confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Our reading from the... New Testament is taken from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy." Now I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord.
Please stand with me for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I, and now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing for our hymn.
Please be seated. This morning we want to look at a John chapter 14, parts of it. Actually, next week we're going to look at other parts of John chapter 14. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, red letter, if you will, part of the Bible, the Word of God, where Jesus gives a lot of uh, instruction. And uh, since this is the day of Pentecost and we're entering that season, in our Bible class time, we're going to cover quite a few different things uh, about the origins of Pentecost, uh, how the Holy Spirit was poured out on people in the Old Testament, and, uh, and we'll look into the New Testament too. But this morning, uh, we zero in on these words that Jesus, in verse 1, we didn't read the whole chapter, and I won't be going through the whole chapter, just selected parts. But where he says, let not your hearts be troubled. And he repeats this uh, later on. Now, of course, the reason their hearts were going to be troubled is because he was going to be arrested and crucified, and he was going to be put in a tomb. Uh, and he wanted them to have peace through that as much as possible. And it, they're very important words for us because even a uh, Though we know that Jesus is alive, he's risen from the dead, he has ascended to the right hand of God, he's with us. Still, there are things uh, these days that can be quite troubling if we let them get to us. Uh, in all my life, of, well, all my life, I've never, uh, and I think it's very necessary what Matthew is doing. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is leading him to do a, a because Everything that we can see, which is very troubling, is that because of the fuel costs going up so much, and oil is actually involved in fertilizer and so on, all of these things, things can get very troubling before you know it. But still, within all of this, even if we've heard words of nuclear possible war, now that's something that's troubling. We, we've uh, all kinds of things that are troubling, just the, well, let me just say it this way, the perversion of sexuality that we, we, we get in the news and the world constantly now. And when I, when I pray, I pray that God will have mercy on us as a nation, uh, that people will challenge and fight to make sure that the right to abort babies is kept. It's troubling. And yet in all this, Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And he points to the future, which you have to hold on to all the time. This is temporary here in this life. And things can change for the better. Uh, we always need to have hope. We need to be praying for our leaders. We need to be praying for our nation, our world. But still, our hope is not in this world. This world is perishing. Jesus says that the ruler of this world is Satan himself. He says that in this chapter. Our hope is beyond this world. And that's what Jesus says. Don't let your hearts be troubled because, he says, in my father's house are many rooms, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And that's the promise of the Savior, Jesus Christ, that one day through faith in him, we are going to be where he is with him forever. So no matter what happens, he's saying, don't let your hearts be troubled. Nothing surprises God. In verse 15, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. We're going to look at that word to keep his commandments and what that means next week. And he says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth. 
And it's interesting, he says really bold things. He says that greater things you're going to be able to do than he did, which is still hard to get a handle on, isn't it? It's such a great promise. And he says, whatever you ask in my name, it will be given to you. But then he comes to this, this is the greatest thing that you can ask for. And that's for the gift of the Holy Spirit for God to manifest himself to you, to make his home in you, if you will, to have a personal Pentecost of God living within us. When I was first seminary, I, I, I've gone to more than two. Some of us need a whole lot more help in education than others. But uh, I had recently had a radical conversion experience and I, I looked out, I, uh preaching professor, he was going to do things, he's saying, I'm going to want you to, everyone to, I'm just going to give you a topic, and then you two are to just stand up and extemporaneously start preaching for a couple of minutes on it. That is scary. Uh, not, no preparation, nothing, just, uh, and then he, he pointed to me, I can't remember what, time in the class it was, he said, uh, Tony Sobosinski, tell us about your own personal Pentecost. We see my conversion and the gift of the Holy Spirit being with was so recent that I just got up there and I felt like I could have preached on it for 45 minutes, even though uh, I had not had any experience preaching yet. And, you know, Jesus said to the Ephesian church, you have lost left your first love. That can mean many different things, but there is something spectacular that happens in some of our experiences with God. And then we can go on with life, maybe mix in a little bit of sin in there, temperature comes down and so on. And uh, we really do need to be revived and renewed again in our love, our passion, uh, and the filling of the Holy Spirit, because that overrides all the troubling things in this world when God is living in us. So this isn't just a one-time event. This is something that very often we have to ask God's forgiveness for letting the embers kind of cool down and almost go out. And we need to ask him to immerse us in himself again to give us that passion. You see, that's the passion that moves people when they are newly converted to want to talk about Jesus to everyone they talk to. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fresh new love. It, it is a passion. You can't stop them. Sometimes new Christians can be frankly obnoxious to people because they keep on talking about how much they love Jesus and the difference he's made in their lives and then sometimes what can happen to us is we kind of go to sleep and we need to be woken. And I don't mean the world's way of being woke. I mean the Holy Spirit's way of being awakened by the Lord himself. And he is the spirit of truth. Everything about him is truth and integrity. He will never lie to you. I, I remember going through some of these questions myself. Well, what if you're trusting God to speak to you and, and lead you into the truth? And what if Satan gets in there and leads you astray? I think what I've come to understand is that God can take care of that. If you give your life and your heart and your soul over to Jesus and you say, lead me and guide me and show me the way, he can override Satan so that you don't have to have that fear. That fear itself can come from the darkness. Jesus says in verse 20, In that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Think about that. that, that that's a good one to meditate on. Jesus is in the Father there together. If you go through the chapter, he is even more dramatic about saying that. And you and me, 
you by faith are in Christ Jesus himself. And he says, and I in you. That is a wonderful union, communion with God. In verse 21, he says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. It's, it's the same kind of word. I, I don't mean appear physically so that you have a vision of seeing Jesus, although all things are possible. He visited many people throughout the Bible. But to all who love him, he shows up. It's really interesting in, in, the, in the book of Genesis, there's a word. On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. And there was Isaac, he was ready to sacrifice his son and kill him, give his life. And all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord stops him and says, Stop, Abraham. And uh, he said, God will provide the sacrifice. And we know that God provided his son for the sacrifice for all the sins of the world. But that word really doesn't mean provided, although it is true God provided the sacrifice. It means God shows up. God manifests himself. When you need him most, and there's some songs, uh, what is it? You picked a fine time to me, leave me, Lucille. You know, there's things out in all of that. And in the world, we, we can't rely necessarily on other people at all. But when things get the worst, you can bet your bottom dollar, if you still have any left, and if they're worth anything, that Jesus will show up and be there for you. We, we know that. See, that's another thing. I, I remember uh, <laughs> I've been in a variety of different kinds of churches. First 21 years of my ministry, I think there were seven different ministries and different denominations too. And then the last 21 years of my ministry, I've been here. But there was one, uh, May was her name. And she came up to me and Penny and we were holding a uh, let me think, what baby would that, that would have been baby Tony, my son. And she came up to us after worship services. Are you ready to have your baby boy burned in hot oil in order to remain faithful to Jesus? And uh, that kind of wrecked my Sunday morning, but It's still a valid question. Do we love the Lord enough that we will rely upon him and commit ourselves to him throughout all the days of our life? Well, anyway, Jesus says that the Father and he will come and make their home in us, and he's also talking about the Holy Spirit, too. So you really have the Trinity throughout this chapter. Uh, verse 26, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus says, he will teach you all things. So when you read your Bible and you need that teaching from God, the Holy Spirit is your teacher. And it says, and he will bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Now, of course, the only way he can bring to our remembrance all that Jesus has said is by reading all that Jesus has said to begin with. And that's so important in our, our day and age. I, I can't go there. Even though someone you don't know, let's just put it this way, a person was saying that God the Holy Spirit was leading this person to do something that clearly violated the teaching of the Bible. That's not the Holy Spirit's ministry to lead us to do what we want to do. He will bring into our remembrance whenever we need it all that Jesus has said to us and he teaches us in his word and that's why it's so rich. Next week, keep my word. It's a beautiful word just to give you a little advance. In verse 27, he says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Now in the days of the 
disciples there, Jesus is going to the cross. And frankly, they are terrified that they're going to be next. And frankly, again, sorry, Frank, for using your name in vain too often. But some of them would die on a cross, just like Jesus. So if you think you got it bad, maybe you want to compare yourself with the disciples. But in the midst of that, he says, peace I leave with you. The word Hebrew is so rich, it's shalom. My peace I give to you. And that is still offered to you and me today. Every day of our lives is peace. I had a, uh, he, he ended up singing at our, our wedding. He's a good singer. He ended up becoming a pastor. But he talked about it this way. He said, uh, if I have a day of missing my Bible reading and my devotions, he says, I really know it. And he says, if I have uh, two days of missing my Bible reading and my devotions, he says, my wife knows it. And he says, if I got three days where I missed my prayer and Bible reading, he says, everyone knows it. And every day, God wants us to draw near to him to receive his peace so that our hearts are not troubled. Jesus says, not as the world gives do I give to you. The world all offers all kinds. And this is the world system, not God so loved the world, all the people of the world that God created. This is God so loved the world, the world, not that world of people, but the world system that is led. He calls the ruler of this world, who is Satan, in John chapter 14, later on, he says, not as he gives peace. He makes all kinds of promises. I really, I really do think there's truth to it. I don't know. You know, so you hear about rock stars that gave their lives over to the devil so they could become fam famous and everything. I really would guess that that probably really does happen. Satan makes all kinds of promises and everything else for peace and prosperity and success and wealth and everything else. And Jesus says, that's not the kind of peace that I give to you that you end up destroying yourself forever by following him. He says, peace I leave to you, leave to you my peace I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. The first time I saw that that was repeated in this chapter, I mean, how many times does a guy, I got to read through the Bible to, but he repeats it. He starts out, let not your hearts be troubled in verse one. And now in verse 27, he says, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We do not need to be afraid of the future. We do not need to let our hearts be troubled by what goes around, along because God has our future in his hands. And God has a track record throughout the Bible of taking care of people in impossible situations. He was able to bring them bread from heaven when they're in the desert. He was able to bring them food and meat down from heaven when they're in the desert. He was able to make water come up out of a rock. And God is still the almighty God of the universe who has promised and committed himself to take care of us. And I end by going back to verse uh, 5. So Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not where you are, know where you are going. They were still confused about he's going to the cross and then he's going to, to be with the Father and so on. He says, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? And Jesus says to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you accept Jesus' words, I know this is not nice sounding to our modern ears, but Jesus says, no one comes to the Father except through him, except through Jesus. There's no other way. But the great thing is, is he's here for all of us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he is the way to come to the Father. 
So, Father, we pray that you would use your word and the word that you spoke through your Son, the word of Christ, and the word that you teach us through the Holy Spirit to give us peace and encouragement and help us to live radically for you. And Father, we pray that even this morning you would relight the fires of passion for you in our hearts. Peace and joy and love. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And at this time, we continue with the words of uh, the Apostles' Creed, which is in the back cover of your hymnal and also in different places. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From hence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Father, we thank you for the wonderful future and for your promises and your almighty power to be able to carry out your promises. Lord, we pray for your blessing upon Matthew and and all the farmers getting together to help take care of people uh, when they get hungry. We pray that you will unite us together as believers to help. And Lord, we pray that this will be a blessing that gives glory to your holy name. And Lord, we do pray for our president, our vice president, our congress, For all all of the people who lead us, Lord, we pray that they will have wisdom on how to to lead and govern uh, your people in this nation and around the world. And Lord, we know that your word says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Father, we pray that you would give that. And Lord, we pray for those who are feel strongly about doing things that oppose your will and your ways and your word. Lord, that you would bring repentance and changes of hearts and conversions. And Lord, we pray that you would save and have mercy upon us as a nation, Lord. Father, we we pray for all those uh, whose health is is either doesn't allow them to be able to come to church or uh, they just should be more careful with their health. We pray for Dave and Wayne and Gail, Helen and Mindy, Rosemary, Mary Ellen. We pray for Rita and Pam, Charlotte, Barb and Tracy. And Father, we pray for uh, healing for Gary and Marion Thompson, healing from COVID. Lord, we thank you that... uh, Uh, We've heard good reports of others who we've prayed for. Lord, we pray for all who need healing, all who need encouragement, all who need your peace, all who have troubled hearts. Lord, we pray for Mike Keener and his family. We continue to pray for Zach Kell and for total healing for him. And Father, we pray for all those making transitions in in their lives. Especially we pray for Grace and Naomi who are graduating from high school and going on to the next stages of their life that your blessing will be upon them, that your spirit will be in their hearts, that you will lead them and guide them in your plan for their lives. 
Father, we know in Ephesians it says, for it is by grace we have been saved through faith, and that's not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. It is from you. So that we can't boast about any of the things that you do within our lives. Because we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Lord, help us to follow you all the days of our life and finish the race doing your will. So, Lord, that all of us can stand before your throne at that place where you, Lord Jesus, have been preparing a place for us in your Father's house and that we may hear encouraging words from you, O Lord. Well done, good and faithful service, servant. Enter into your master's joy. Lord, we pray that that hope will keep us going all the days of our life, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And uh, we continue with the, the song on page 159. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, in all places, in all circumstances, give thanks and praise to you, O Lord our God. Because you are almighty, there is no one like you. You are holy, and you love us, and you have committed yourself to us. So therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud your holy, magnificent name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, 
eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace.
this is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. body of Christ given for you and take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you unto life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. given for you and take and drink this is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins may the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting go in his peace
take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in his peace. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. This is the body of Christ given for you. And take and drink. This is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and preserve us into life everlasting. We go in the peace of Christ. Amen. On 
on page 164 is Thank the Lord. Please stand with me as we sing. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.